Well, welcome to DTLT today. We're really excited today because we were able to line up a special guest today. So we actually have a talk, and I hope I don't butcher this now. I'm going to try this. Uh, we have Antonio Vantaggiato. Is that the correct way of saying your you name? You butchered it. Did I? Yep. It is. <laughs> Hi. It's Vantaggiato. Vantaggiato? You got to say it like an Italian, like you want a pizza. Like, give me a Vantaggiato. 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 <laughs> well, I do what I can. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, I, unfortunately, both me and you were planning to go up to New York earlier this year in the summertime and to meet Antonio, and it fell through. Uh, but I hear that you had some awesome interviews and a great chance to work on this secret project of yours and we're dying to know what this project is what you're working on and a little bit of information about it so exactly tell us man come clean there you go. Antonio come clean okay, okay I'll, I'll try and come clean of it uh, first of all thanks to have me today with you guys and uh, I've, I've been there physically in Fredericksburg uh, uh, a couple of years ago, and I loved it. I, I was joking with Jim before, saying that you guys have a really splendid environment, and uh, wh whatever you do, I mean, comes in a, in a very, very innovative way. So I'm, I'm I, again, I thank you. I, I thank your friendship, and uh, well, I see that uh, yes, unfortunately, this summer. We could not materialize the meetings that I, I would have loved to, to have. But still, we had a few there. And uh, uh, from, I mean, I enjoyed so much meeting with particularly uh, uh, Michael, Mikhail uh, Gershovich yeah. and uh, Gina Garcia and um, uh, Luke Walter from all from CUNY and Gina is from well where she's from from Mexico Connecticut and California <laughs> she's a gypsy she's all over the place she's a rogue <laughs> exactly, exactly I I had so much fun really I, I I'm so lucky and uh, we spent uh, a couple of uh, lunches and uh, we had um, uh, what I call an interview. Uh, with uh, with Mikhail and his staff at CUNY uh, in a formal way. Uh, in fact, they taped it in a very professional way and they gave me uh, the tape, but I uh, have still to uh, comply with my promise that I would, uh, uh, in a way, post about it and, and the post the video itself, which I haven't done yet. So we did also an interview at uh, NYU's library with Gina and Mikhail and um, um, I mean all, all the names. I'm, I'm um, I think he's um, uh, Thomas. Thomas, if I'm not wrong. Michael Branson Smith. So, Sorry. Michael Sorry? Branson Smith. All oh, right, Michael. Right, you're right. And. Um, and we had such a great time there. So uh, uh, this is something that I, I decided to do uh, uh, some some time ago. And uh, as you know, I, I like to work with this uh, uh, technology and education stuff, as you do. And I've been studying the the, the phenomenon that the phenomena that are uh, going on and particularly why it's so difficult for the revolutionary power of the web and the new technologies to really come out and change things. And we have a, an, an enormous amount of inertia in the educational world, especially in higher education, where things don't seem to work well today. Uh, we may say that we have a, a, a huge crisis, uh, but um, uh, and and nothing gets really changed except in a few instances. For instance, what uh, you and Jim are doing, um, a few other guys, and uh, so so I, I I I the more I thought about it, the more I understood that we are full of these uh, common use 
of these um, common ideas that persevere in time. For instance, uh, and I call them the myths of uh, teaching and learning. And I should add of technology. For instance, we, uh, uh, we continue saying in common language that we deliver courses like they were uh, hamburgers <laughs> and we uh, uh, actually I read in a, in a in a major article and I keep reading in, in, the, in the New York Times in the Wall Street Journal in the uh, in major um, media I keep reading sometimes that online students watch lectures while face-to-face uh, -face people attend lectures. So I think that language shows us what really people believe uh, around teaching, learning, technology, and, and so on. So I decided to study those phenomena a bit more deeply. And I applied for a, a scholarship at NYU, and I got it this summer. And I had the privilege to spend the full month of June in New York City, living, I mean, close to Union Square, which was a paradise for me. And um, I worked every day in the beautiful NYU library. And together with other people from many other places. So I, I really had an, a chance to reflect on these, these things. And so I, I began to write. Uh, first, I wanted to write a pamphlet or something, but then uh, I realized that uh, I, I am a bit afraid of saying so because it's a big commitment, but this is coming out as a book. So uh, I'm, 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 I think I'm writing this book on the myths of teaching and learning and what we can do about it. And um, uh, in fact, the book took also a turn during my stay there because one of the ideas I had about how I could really uh, enjoy the, the fact of being in New York City was to begin interviewing people, people that I follow, people that I know of, uh, and they whose whose work I admire and whose whose positions I, I more or less uh, agree on. So I began to interview people like uh, Clay Shirky, like uh, Mikhail, like uh, Michael, like uh, Gina, and uh, I interviewed Kathleen, uh, Catherine Fitzpatrick. Uh, I interviewed a lot of people who were really very, very nice uh, doing that. Now I have in mind to continue those interviews here in, in Puerto Rico, I will interview people who are Puerto Rico based. So I will go and interview Mario Nunez and other friends here. And then I'm going to interview, uh, you You don't know it yet, but you are uh, part of the of my plan. <laughs> so we're on your list. <laughs> world domination. There you go. Yeah, world domination, exactly. So, uh, well, in fact, you already were, but since we couldn't, we, we couldn't do that in New York, right. we're going to do it online uh, some sometime soon. Um, but I had a big pause during the summer, during July. First, because I went with uh, my daughters to have a, a small tour of universities in uh, in northeastern U.S. and then because I went to visit my mom in 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 Italy, so I'm back working now, and I have to 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 collect my stamina back, my energy again, and and keep on writing and keep on uh, thinking. Antonio, about this, can I can I ask you a question? What are some of the examples of the myths that you've like? whether you talk to Kathleen Fitzpatrick, Clay Shirky, Mikhail, Gina, what are some of the myths that you can share with us playfully here so we can get a sense of what it is? And my second question after that is, why write a book? OK. okay. Well, I think that uh, Fitzpatrick uh, put it in, in her interview very, very well. I mean, faculty and students and, uh, are very confused. We all are very confused about the power of technology and the role of technology. We think sometimes that technology is a different thing. 
So we tend to see technology as a separate thing while we live within technology. In fact, Kevin Kelly says that we are technology. Technology, in his opinion, is what defines us as humans. I don't know if that is 100% true, but still it's, it's, a, it's a very important thing. And for instance, in this, in this research, what came out was Marshall McLuhan uh, uh, positions uh, in a very strong way. Uh, uh, not only we shape technology, but sh technology shapes us. So it's very difficult to say where one finish and where the other begin. But people think it is not true. So for instance, one of the myths is everything is great, but you are going to use technology in a humanistic way, right? Mm -hmm. So, oh, sorry, I think I, I went in, uh, in um, a sleep mode. Okay. Yeah, so, so people are sort of afraid, no? In, 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 in what sense I say in a humanistic way, is technology not humanistic? Is not humane technology? Of course, it may, use, may be used in a non-humane way. We know that very well. But it's human, so I, I, I'm very afraid of those of those uh, myths, and I I begin with them. Another, so one, a few of the myths relate to technology and our relationship with technology, especially in uh, teaching and learning. Also, one big myth that I found is that people tend to believe that we actually learn inside the classroom. So, and that's a big myth. I, I constantly have to tell my students, well, don't really expect that you're learning here. And, uh, and it's, it's, um, it's, I mean, uh, maddening to think how many people think that is true. Uh, so um, many, many, that, that myth also uh, brings us to another one. So if you learn in one particular place, then you have uh, to be helped to learn by somebody. So you need an agent to uh, have you learn. So, and, uh, um, and that's also a, a big problem, uh, another myth. The, 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 the teacher as the, the agent who will have you learn and um, so on and so forth uh, for instance um, the, the fear of teachers can we be replaced by machines and uh, I think that somebody probably was it Arthur Clark who said that if we if we can be replaced by machine then we should be <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, I think it's a, it's an it's an irrelevant question. I mean, I I, I, I I can understand the fear. I'm not a suicidal person who want to lose his job, but um, I, I I think this is a this is a, a huge myth. So, so all this all this sort of myth uh, among uh, another one came out this summer when, uh, um, I don't remember his name now, the, one of the past, one of, one of the founders of PayPal founded that reverse scholarship for people not going into college. Right. Uh, and he said, well, look, I'm, I, and he found actually 20 youngsters and he gave them money to found a startup instead of going to college. Well, that's a great idea. And so there is a, a huge discussion in the U.S. now if college is actually worthwhile, if, if higher education is worthwhile, what is happening. And uh, other myths are about the famous liberal arts concept. The liberal arts concept, uh, as you know, is a very ancient idea. And uh, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, many people, again, equate liberal arts with the humanities. And, the liberal arts actually uh, uh, include maths and, and science since their Greek uh, uh, times. So I think that we have a lot of stuff uh, going on. So that, that leads me to a question, Antonio. Um, yeah. if, 
it is the goal of your book then to dispel certain myths or to expound on them or to come to any resolution, especially like you mentioned in terms of um, is higher education worth it? It does it make more sense to drop out of school and start and fund your own startup and that kind of thing. Would you say that those are things that you're trying to resolve in your book or are you more just trying to expound on them and figure out what's really going on? Well, what, that's one of the things I'm trying to do. Uh, I don't know if I will actually succeed. I hope so. I, I don't pretend to, uh, to uh, get into any conclusion, firm conclusion, because this is all a matter who is very fluid, which is very fluid now. But I, I hope to uh, perhaps help uh, us to see um, uh, things in teaching, learning, and technology in uh, not in a new way, but uh, perhaps more, uh, more calmly and more uh, deeply. And then what I want to do is I want to show a few examples from uh, uh, many places in the world where people are doing uh, extraordinary work to uh, really change how things are done. So before, and this is the idea that came this summer, uh, I, I have these myths sections, section in the first part of the book. Uh, I, I grow this section through the interviews because people give me a lot of ideas and a lot of feedback on that. And then there's a second part, which, is, which I'm building, which is basically what can we learn from those myths? And then what can we learn from examples? For instance, the, the work that um, uh, Jim has been doing on storytelling, what does teach us? Uh, what does that teach us uh, uh, in terms of deconstructing, as Downs was putting it, deconstructing uh, a, a course and putting to, into the students the, the power to develop themselves a narrative, and uh, uh, I'm other other examples um, from both the, the academic and the non-academic work. Um, we we met this great woman Dolores uh, Rey from Barcelona, and uh, she's a great uh, um, also uh, teacher, and uh, I. I She's one of the next I'll be interviewing, too. And uh, she provides us with examples in uh, the way he develops her own enterprise to, uh, to do the work she likes. So she gives us an example of what to do after college and on how to study and, and so on. And the work that Downs and Siemens are doing, the theory of connectivism, uh, uh, is having a, 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 a deep uh, effect. Uh, it doesn't matter actually if you uh, uh, think in the um, in the theory itself, but you can see examples of it uh, being applied. So this is the book, more or less. Um, myths. What what is the, the reality of higher education? I hope I, I capture it uh, well. And then uh, what people are doing. And what lessons are we uh, learning from the myths and from these new, uh, very good examples of, um, the, 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 of the use of technology? I don't like to call it the use of technology. The, the, I would like to say the way uh, technology is immersed into uh, course doing and vice versa. Course doing is immersed into our own uh, time and, and technology. So this is, I hope I can, I can convey the right way. Today I'm speaking a very bad English, so uh, I, I don't know, words tend to, to come out oh, in a difficult you're fine. way. I do want to mention real quick to the people in the chat room, if anybody has questions for you, they can put them in the chat and we'll definitely try to, um, you know, get those answered or ask them to you or yeah, whatever. And Jason Green mentioned a Chronicle article that I haven't read yet, but if online or learning is everywhere, what's the ne next big thing? And I mean, relating that back to what you're saying, um, Antonio, how do you, one of the things that fascinates me is we have this kind of, like you said, this moment 
Um, and the moment is still, and we have theories now that are kind of filling up some of that, whether it be connectivism, um, just imagining where we're going. One of the things that kind of strikes me is with these ideas and with this kind of notion, you're framing this kind of study as a book. And I'm wondering how does the book itself as a format um, maybe be the best way to express that or there are other ways, right? I mean, we talk about the classroom and that changing. What about, I think a lot of times I see this idea of the humanist, at least when it's married with technologies, often remediating the web for the ways we traditionally have thought of academia. So why a book? Yeah, I think you're, you, you're posing a, a, an essential question here. Uh, I, I have no idea. I tend to think about books because this is how I tend to write. So I tend to write in a more or less linear way. And, um, I, uh, but I'm, I'm aware, and in fact, I plan to um, begin publishing as soon as I have uh, something perhaps better, um, better configured, I, I plan to publish it online and, and, and begin having reaction from people. Fitzpatrick published her book in both ways, both a, a physical uh, uh, dead tree form and uh, a, a virtual form that helped her, her get a lot of feedback and a lot of, of um, ideas from people. So I'm using the word book in a very fluid way here. I, I, I think I will begin with the online publishing and then we'll see. I mean uh, what people would suggest also would be very important to me. I'm also, and I'm learning in the process. For instance, I didn't know how to interview people before, so I, I started doing everybody the same question, and I, I immediately, sort of, soon realized that it didn't work that way. And for instance, Gina, <laughs> Gina told me when we were inside the library, she was really bored of of the of the interview process, and I. I, I mean, I can understand her, and she gave me a, a really great feedback and a great, great ideas. So, I mean, it's it's a fluid thing. Well, the other thing is, but the, you know, uh, uh, the, the way you're going about your on, book? on your on your idea, you know, the book as a as a uh, and as, as an established format, which uh, in this case may be um, may be not the best way. Um, one of the one of the questions that I want to uh, uh, attend in the book is uh, why is it so that we have such a powerful technology which is the web and the new web and we are not seeing the the changes that it implies that that it has in itself why it is not that that so we're seeing changes only in little niches and uh, not uh, because perhaps our institution have a degree of inertia so huge like it happened with the printing press. I mean, it might be, that might be one of the reasons. And, and we as, as also as teachers are very conservative in our way to, in which we view the world. Well, so, and let's not forget the web is only 20 years old, you know, and the printing press is, you know, exactly, so, yeah. I mean. Yeah, well, true. even, I mean, thinking about the work you've done with your book already, Antonio, you've, I mean, I followed your work with this on your blog, because you start, it seemed to start out as a kind of blog project, and you blogged a whole series yeah. of early examples of it. So, I mean, yeah. I'm interested in that, because it seemed like it was born out of another format, but then will be kind of a repository to something like a book or wherever. And I, I mean, I don't mean to complicate the idea of the book too much. I don't think, you know, it's just one other way now to distribute it. Yeah, no, I'm sure that I, I, I'm going to begin with uh, the, the digital and online format to allow um, comments and discussion uh, uh, in it. So uh, I'm sure of that. Then what other form it will take, we'll see. Uh, but uh, I'm, 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 I just need uh, some, some more time during the semester to polish a little bit what I already did and continue. I mean, I wrote some 80 pages 
80 conventional pages during the, the month of June. And I think I, I need something more to, to do that. However, the title of the book is coming out very beautifully. Do you want to know what is yes, it? Yes, we do. <laughs> it's very modestly called Zen of Teaching. I love it. Awesome. The Zen of Teaching. Thanks. It's like Alan Levine recently did the Zen of Motorcycle Maintenance, right? <laughs> yes. Or something like that, some twist on that. Well, that's awesome, Antonio. Is it true Alan, Alan is coming there? He'll be here next week. Or I don't know, actually. Oh. His schedule's not totally right, but he'll be right. here this month. Oh, great. Oh, great. So we look forward to that. Well, Antonio, it's been really exciting to get to talk to you. Um, for people who want to follow along, should they go to your blog, or should do you have a separate website for the book yet, or where should they go to follow along with your progress? That's a very good question. <laughs> well, my blog is for the time being the only place where you can get some sense of it. And my blog is Kate of the Web. You can search it on Google. The, the, the URL for the moment is too complex, so I won't okay. give it to you. Uh, but uh, Skate of the Web, uh, well, actually, blogs.netedu.com. Um, info that's the address but I I bought a couple of domains and uh, it, 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 the idea of the of the online format is I mean it's taking form slowly so I bought the domain um, uh, Zen of teaching dot us so I, I, I copied the idea from ps106 dot us and uh, I, 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 I put it there in place. Good. So we'll see. But you, you won't find anything at the moment there. Oh, it's just in pro Well, this is really exciting. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing how it, how it plays out, watching, watching as you build it out on the web and that kind of thing. And um, really looking to see your take on this whole thing. I think it's a really hot topic that um, people are interested in. No, and I like the whole idea of these myths have to be examined in some way. Yeah. And who better to do it than the great Antonio Van Fajata. There you go. So, Antonio, thank you again for joining us and uh, talking with us. And Skate of the Web, um, Google it so yeah. <laughs> to find the exact address. We'll put it in the show notes for And look for, today. for some, uh, some Woody Allen posts there, too. And thanks again for talking with us, thanks. Antonio. Thanks, Antonio. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Have, Have a good time. You too. And thank you for watching DTLT today. This is an ep another episode in the wraps, and uh, we'll see you all again tomorrow. Bye.